Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of CamLogic's Tech Tuesday. My name is Joshua Ponzetti, and I'm an application engineer at CamLogic. Tech Tuesday is our free weekly 30-minute tips and tricks webinar. Today's topic is uh, Solid Edge Alternate Position Assembly. Before we get into today's topic, let's talk a little bit about who is CamLogic. CamLogic is a leading provider of product life cycle management, or better known as PLM solutions, 3D scanning and rapid prototyping technologies, services to help companies design and build better products, improve processes, reduce costs, maximize profitability. We provide unparalleled 3D engineering technological solu solutions along with the service and support to ensure our clients' success. CamLogic is a Siemens PLM solution partner. We offer the complete Siemens software suite including NX, SolidEdge, FEMAP, and TeamCenter. We also provide a complete array of 3D printing hardware and service solutions including the 3D Systems Project Series and the Z-Print Series, which is the most affordable color 3D printers on the market. 3D scanning technologies rounds out our trifecta of engineering solutions from the state-of-the-art hardware like Romere, Absolute Arm, Shape Grabber, and Z-Scanner coupled with cutting-edge and time-saving inspection and reverse engineering software products from GeoMagic and RapidForm. CamLogic is here to provide a variety of solutions to meet all of your business challenges, including professional, high-quality, in-house scanning services. All right, let's go ahead and start talking a little bit about our topic today which is going to be the alternate assembly. Again, this is found in the assembly environment in SolidEdge. And a couple of things that we're going to go ahead and cover is going to be uh, the actual assembly. We're going to assemble up, a shut up, assemble up a shutoff valve. We're also going to uh, address some assembly relationships, point out a few things, a couple tips and tricks on uh, facilitating that within the SolidEdge assembly environment. We're going to create, actually create the alternate assemblies. So uh, we're going to go through the creation process and also uh, showing the ability to edit and control the positioning uh, after the full assembly is put into a finalized assembly mode. We're also going to create a drawing of that assembly. Not only creating the drawing, but also showing primary and alternate positions at the drawing level. This is actually a new functionality that has been introduced in ST5. So all of you people viewing today, if you have ST4, uh, the primary and alternate positions at the draft level are not going to be available to you. Uh, you have to be in ST5. So new functionality and always uh, a great idea to stay up on the latest, most cutting edge versions of Solid Edge. Uh, and then finally, we're going to go back and we're going to edit those positions and, and show how we can bring that through the assembly to the draft and, and also go ahead and take care of uh, those, those activities uh, in, in order to have full control over the positions of the assembly that we wish to show. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, let's get to work on this stuff, guys. So I'm going to start off by pulling up Solid Edge. And you can see what we have here is what's going to be the assembled shutoff valve. But what I did was just to kind of begin showing you a few, few tricks in the assembly environment, I brought in uh, an assembly that has all the parts already inside of our environment. And you can see over here on our Pathfinder, uh, everything's there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my assemble command. And the beauty of the, of the assemble command is we don't have to necessarily focus on our relate bar up here. Uh, what we can do in the assemble command is we can default flash fit. So those of you out there that are using flash fit, you guys are probably very familiar with what I'm going to show you. But those of you who aren't, 
just know that we can go in and in our options under the assemble command we can use the flash fit as a the default placement method as well as use the reduce steps when placing the parts okay and there's also some some options here to locate uh, element types as well so uh, we can go ahead and set all that up and have that as uh, current options when we're working in solid edge primarily in the assemble command uh, utilizing the flash fit so you can see that if I if I select the flash fit button all of my relationships are still here but I like to default to my flash fit just because it's the way how I like to work so let's go ahead now that we're in the assemble command and we're looking to utilize the flash fit now I can begin going in and assembling up um, the shutoff valve now what I want to be sure to point out is that currently I'm not doing anything other than picking the surfaces which I, I, I wish to mate and constrain my assembly I'm not doing anything uh, along the lines of you know selecting the part then selecting uh, the surface I, I want to put together whether it be through a mate, through an axial line, through a planar line. All I'm doing is selecting surfaces and moving right through the assembly process without having any type of added or um, any type of, of added or extended uh, step activities. So now I'm going to go ahead and slow down there. You can see I assembled all of those components up pretty quickly. Uh, just staying in the flash fit, allowing SolidS to do the work for me. I want to focus over here on these screws now. When I come in and begin assembling these screws, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a more uh, traditional way of assembling up these screws. And I'm going to grab the underside of that head, and I'm going to set it down on top of that recess. And I'm going to grab um, the the cylinder and knowing that I can lock the rotation or leave the rotation unlocked here at my command bar. So now that I've selected that I can do the axial line to place the screw into that position and then you know of course we could always come through and lock that in this case I, I left that unlocked alright but if I undo that I'm gonna come back out and now I'll show you that um, the method of using the lock rotation. So if I grab that and begin assembling again, I can grab the underside of that head. All right. Can lock the rotation. Now I can set that, and you'll see that by grabbing this screw, we're now fully constrained through the lock rotation. Another way of doing this is again going through the assemble command. We're down to the flash fit, and now this is a little tip and trick for everybody. If we go ahead and right click and grab just the edge, here, let me get in here a little bit closer. Okay, we grab that edge that would, would meet at the underside of that head and the cylinder of the screw. We can grab the corresponding edge we want to lock it down to, and in two clicks we can go ahead and place that screw fully constrained. So now if I select that screw again you can see I'm fully constrained and notice how it still gave me the mate on the other side of the head as well as the axial line locking the rotation all based off just selecting the two edges. So that's just a little tip and trick it's something I like to show. So I'm gonna go ahead and just finish wrapping up assembling these guys Again, back to my assemble command. I don't have to really do too much thinking other than saying, hey, this is what I want to put together. This is how I want to assemble these two components or these two parts. And Solid Edge makes sure that I don't have to work too hard to get that accomplished. Doing the thinking for me on what relationships I actually need to produce the assembly that I'm trying to take care of. And Finally, we wound, we wind up with a fully constrained assembly, and we learned a couple little tips and tricks in there in the meantime. Okay, and the next thing I want to do is I'm going to focus on this handball because, again, this is a shutoff valve, and you can see that right now it's closed. But if we were to rotate this handle 90 degrees, then we would have that open. So what I want to do 
is again, based on what we learned when I showed you the screws, you notice how I did the handball, I just grabbed and made it the two edges. You can see that I have the axial line. I'm going to unlock that rotation so we can always go back. Now I'm going to unlock the rotation. So we can always go back and, and, and edit our relationships at will. Uh, SolidEdge makes it very easy to handle uh, that type of activity. But now that this handball is uh, under constraint, now I can rotate it. Uh, we can use the drag component just to ensure that, hey, I have freedom of movement here. And you can see I can rotate this handle around. And now just to verify that I've assembled everything properly on this handball, notice how inside of the shutoff valve we can see upon rotating that there is actually um, a opening in the ball of the handball that's going to uh, allow this to be open and closed when rotating this handle. So it looks like we have a, have a good assembly here. So now all i got to do is make sure that I include the assembly relationship that I feel I need in order to start putting some alternate positions on open and closed positions of this shutoff valve. So if I come down here, I'm going to go into an angular relationship. And all I'm going to do is grab a couple surfaces for alignment. So I want to measure to and from those two surfaces. And now I'm going to come in and put that measurement right on there. So now if I go to my handball, I can set that at zero, and you can see that at zero, this is this shutoff valve is currently open. All right. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and as always, you know, when we when we start getting through what we want to accomplish in Solid Edge, we make sure we save our work and uh, and ensure that uh, you know we don't. Uh, we don't have any type of activities where where we would work backwards or not have uh, the hard work that we just did. So we have to save that up. But that's also in preparation of having the alternate assemblies and begin producing them. Um, just so you know that if you're in an assembly, you begin creating it, and you want to make some alternate assemblies, there you will be prompted to save that assembly off uh, before creating any new members. So. Uh, I'll show you again that right here on our sidebar, you can see we can open up our alternate assemblies. And I'm going to go ahead and pin that down because I want to do some work in here. And the first thing I need to do is I need to start a new member. So the first time I start a new member, you're going to see this dialog box. We have the alternate assemblies up there. Uh, and what it's going to do is, as you can see, that there's some verbiage there. Basically what they're saying is, is okay. In alternate assemblies, we can make two types of alternate assemblies. We can make a family of assembly, or we can make an alternate position assembly. In this case, I want to make an alternate position assembly because this is what our topic is today, and also uh, this is going to showcase some new functionality in ST5 that I think is going to be useful to you guys. So, uh, Brief explanation, a family of assembly would be an assembly with interchangeable parts. Alternate position of assembly would be the same assembly with alternate positions. So that's kind of uh, just a brief way of summing that up. And we're going to start with some, with some member names. Well, the current member we know has our ball valve open. So the member I'm going to call open. And my new member is I want, I want to call it closed. All right. So now when I select OK, it's now produced two members. Or in this case, I can go to my open member, and you can see my ball valve is open. If I come in here to the closed member, you're going to see that the ball valve is still open, but it gives us the opportunity to work with this member. If I go into my edit table, you can see I have my closed and my open. And we can also see that down here, this is our angular relationship, and you can see that the, the degrees are listed. If I go in and begin putting some values into these, you will see that it'll then begin updating the member. So now I have my open position. Okay, valve is open. Now I'm going to do my closed position. Okay, now you can see that the ball valve is closed. 
Now I want to show you that we can add new members at this level or we can do it through the edit table. So if I create another member, I'm going to call this one close to. And I'll create another member and I'll call that um, partial. And one more, which will be partial too. Because I want a full range of positions. So simply by editing these values, we're going to be able to dictate what each one of those positions are. Now I have my closed position and my open position. Now my second closed position, I want to be at negative 90, and that would flip my handle around uh, the other direction, closed. Uh, the partial, I'd like at 45, and the other partial, I'm going to put at negative 45, so then that way we have all of these different positions, and they're all going to be organized right here. So I have my, my open, okay, so that's opened up. Now I got my closed. You can see it closed this direction. Now I'm going to come down to my closed two, and you can see it's closed in the other direction, and my partials are going to be right here partially open and you can see that we're just seeing that ball valve peak open and then I'm also going to do uh, partial two which will then flip it in that opposite direction uh, over over this way. So now that we have all these positions in order I'm going to go ahead and save this up and now what I want to do is I'm going to create a new drawing. So I go into create a new drawing. Yes, I want to run the drawing view creation wizard and the ANSI draft sounds good to me. Now notice how automatically my draft defaulted to this drawing view creation wizard and also already kept track for me the alternate position assemblies and what members were, were there to bring into my draft. Now this is the new functionality that I was telling you guys about in ST5. We can now go to uh, dictate what the primary position will be and then any alternate positions that we want to show. So my primary position I want is going to be open. And just, just for now, let's go ahead and let's include uh, my closed positions just to get this thing down uh, on our draft. We can also see that now after we've gotten past that first section of the wizard, everything is looking the same and normal to us as far as the drawing view creation wizard. Um, so now I'm going to go in and we'll just verify through doing a custom view. It's the view that I want. Let's go ahead and bring that view wizard back in. We'll bring in the assemble. Again, using the open and the two closed positions. And we'll go just a straight ISO view. We'll finish and we'll set it down. And you can see now we have uh, a drawing view showing our open as our primary and the two closed positions as our secondary and phantom lines. Uh, another way to look at this that can be very helpful is we can go ahead and we can we can shade this up with edges and what that does is help to make that primary a little bit more evident as to what it is. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw a parts list down on here so then that way we can kind of keep track of exactly what we have going on here and uh, you can see that that will make account for all of the parts that we have in the shutoff valve assembly. The next thing I want to do is show that at any point in time, we can always go back, right click on the view, and dictate what positions we want by changing them, by doing something different with them. Uh, you know, again, uh, right now we have the open as the primary. We can add in those partials that we created. And upon updating, okay, you can see now these partials are included. So we have the two closed positions, the two partials and also the open being our primary. And notice down here too is that the phantom lines don't, e don't end with just the handle placement. You can see down here that it's also showing the entire handball assembly in phantom lines, helping us to see that 
the, there is positioning relative to the handle down inside of our valve. So again, this is the great uh, new function in ST5 that allows you to not only create the alternate positions at the assembly level, but let's bring them into the draft, let's show them intuitively, let's make them come to life for you know anybody who's going to touch this valve assembly um, after we're done with it and say, hey, yes, handle is rotating, yes, it's opening and closing the shutoff valve. So again, great new function uh, to ST5, Solid Edge always helping us to, to design better. One thing I want to show you is we can go ahead and say, for instance, we went ahead and set up this drawing. Uh, some of you out there may be used to quick sheets. Others may not be. I personally love them. So now we have a drawing. Let's go ahead and create a quick sheet of it. So if I go to my start menu, create quick sheet template, this is just telling me, hey, you know, make sure that you've saved everything and all your current work is good because once we create that quick sheet template, we're going to go ahead and pretty much lose everything. So I say, okay, now it's telling me where do we want to save off our quick sheet template. Well, those of you who are unfamiliar with the standard uh, placement of where we keep all of our template files in Solid Edge, uh, we can go ahead and I will take us right through there. Go to our program files folder, Solid Edge ST5 into our template folder. We want to go into our quick sheet. I actually already saved off a quick sheet alternate position which is just a quick sheet of, of this that, that I did earlier. So we can go ahead and now that we have that quick sheet available, I'm going to go ahead and close out this drawing. I'm back to my valve and what I want to do is, is from the assembly, I want to go ahead and create a new drawing. I'm not going to run the drawing view creation wizard. I'm going to browse out to my quick sheet that I created, which was alternate position. I'm going to say, OK. It's going to automatically create my drawing for me. Um, what I wanted to show you was first a little tip and trick of creating a quick sheet. Uh, a lot of times we have repetitive designs. We have things that we want to uh, set up and document quickly in a drawing form. Quick sheet gets you there as quick as you possibly can. So you can see that, again, I have an isometric view. I was able to set it up for a little bit of scale, get the quick, sh or I'm sorry, get the part list in there and have Solid Edge do all that work for me because, again, i got to make a whole bunch of these shutoff valve assembly drawings and I don't want to have to go through and do the drawing view creation wizard every time and, and, and create a part list every time and, and do all that. But the good news is is that uh, at any given time we can right click on an alternate position assembly in the draft and go right back in and begin dictating again what we want our primary view to be, what we want our alternate positions to be. So we can do the open and we'll include all the other positions. Once we update, again, they'll all show in Phantom. And then uh, again, if we just want to right click and set the primary alternate positions, we can also uh, maybe, maybe in this case, we want to just do uh, 190 degree side of the opening and closing of the shutoff valve so we can um, we'll take off our closed two and our partial two and when we update that you can see that now this is from an open to a closed position with one shutoff valve position in between I like it I think this is how I want to throw this out to uh, the person who will be assembling the shutoff valve for me again showing the rotation of the handle in order to open and close the valve itself so Finally, one last thing I want to show you is that at, at any point in time, we can always come back into our assembly. And by going into our edit table, we can edit these values. So say if I wanted my partials to be 30 degrees and negative 30 degrees, we can accept that. We'll save this out.
Then we come back to our drawing view. It's automatically going to prompt us that it's out of date. We say OK. Once we update that drawing view, you'll see that our alternate position is has updated uh, for our partial back to 30 degrees. And, uh, and what that will allow us to do is, uh, as always, just edit that table and so will keep track of it for us and we'll go ahead and pull those changes through to our draft seamlessly. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll show those other positions. Okay, and you can see that both of those positions that I changed from 45 degrees to 30 degrees uh, have updated. And again, it works seamless just like we're used to with everything else as far as changes are concerned in Solid Edge. So, let's take a quick look at what we did. We assembled the shutoff valve. We identified the relationships to dictate the different positions. We created the new alternate position assembly. We created a drawing of the alternate position assembly using traditional creation. And then again with quick sheet creation. So again, we first started off with taking that alternate position assembly after we created it. We went in to begin a new draft. We used the drawing view creation wizard automatically it defaulted to the primary alternate positions for us. That will populate when an alternate position assembly is created and brought into a draft. If you're doing your normal activities in Solid Edge and you don't have an alternate position assembly or you're working with a part, it's not going to include that. That's only when Solid Edge notices or says, hey, you're bringing alternate position assembly. I have to give you this choice to make. Also, um, after doing that through the traditional method, we did it through the quick sheet. Showed you how to create a quick sheet real, real quick. Uh, again, it's really simple. It's really fast. And it's great for that repetitive design activities that you need to get drawings made quickly and easily on. Uh, we noticed the primary and secondary position addition to the drawing view creation wizard, like I said. And then we went back and and, and did some edits uh, the chosen to the chosen primary and secondary positions after we created them. So we were able to do some editing quick and easy. We used the edit table at the alternate position assembly level, and we brought them right on over to the brought them right on over to the um, to the draft, updating everything seamlessly. So that concludes. Uh, what we were wanted to cover in the in the working portion of the tips and tricks here today. Uh, let's talk a little bit about training here at Cam Logic. We offer a large variety of hands-on instruction intensive courses for our users at every level. Training is available at the on-site lo location of your choice or one of our training labs located throughout the Midwest. For more information. Uh, you can check our website or, uh, or look forward to registering for one of our upcoming classes. You can see that we have an upcoming class coming uh, January 21st through the 25th in Cleveland, in Cleveland, Ohio. And also another Solid Edge ST5 Essentials class uh, February 25th through March 1st. And uh, that one will be here at Cam Logic, and we're located in Oxford, Michigan. For replays of today's Tech Tuesday and other videos from the team here at Cam Logic, you can link in through our website or visit YouTube. Videos normally post within 24 hours of airing, and you will find a large library of past Cam Logic instructional videos for all of your technological needs. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or call me at any time. Be sure to visit our website at www.camlogic.com. We can also be found on LinkedIn, Blogger, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And you can see my contact information up there on the slide. This concludes today's edition of Tech Tuesday. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great day.